Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about ways that you can support someone you love going through breast cancer and its treatment. If you are going through breast cancer and its treatment and you find this video helpful, share it with the people who love you. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. So if you have somebody you love going through breast cancer, you might be wondering, what can I do to help? I thought I'd start with emotional support, with some do's and some don'ts. One of the most important things you can do is listen to the person who's going through breast cancer and its treatment from the minute people are told they have an abnormality on their imaging or a physical exam suggests a concern, all the way through to the end of treatment and through survivorship, People need somebody to listen to them. It's very common for us to want to take away the pain, take away the anxiety, the worry, the fear of somebody else. Paradoxically, when we do that, people can actually feel more alone because they're not getting to talk about what's on their mind. So I'll give you an example. If somebody says, I'm really worried about this possibly being breast cancer, I just had my mammogram and there's an abnormality and I need a biopsy and I'm really scared. Saying to them, it won't be breast cancer, it'll be fine. This happened to me and it wasn't breast cancer. What that does is it might alleviate your discomfort and it might give them a temporary sense of reassurance, but it also doesn't allow them to say how they're truly feeling and for them to follow that through. So what I mean by follow that through is practicing. If this is cancer, what would be most helpful to me? Or if somebody you love is worried it's breast cancer, you can say, it might be, and I understand your worry. I'm worried too. Do you see the difference between that and it won't be breast cancer because you don't know. You don't know any more than and I would if your loved one has breast cancer. You hope it's not. And you can certainly say, well, we hope it's not. I hope it's not. But if it is, I will be here for you. So that's just one example. If somebody says, I don't want to get chemotherapy. Frankly, nobody wants to get chemotherapy. It's quite unusual for people to say, I want chemotherapy. You can say, I can understand. Even if you're not saying, I understand because I've been through it, you can say, it makes sense that you don't want chemotherapy. That's all you need to say. You don't need to say, oh, it won't be that bad. Or you don't need to say, you probably won't need chemotherapy because again, you don't know. And telling them it won't be that bad in a way signals that you can't handle it if it is bad. I'm hoping this makes sense. You just want to say, it sounds really difficult, or that makes sense, or tell me more. That is music to somebody's ears. Think about a time that you were going through a difficult situation and somebody was complaining about somebody in a shop or a store. If we tell, if we tell you, well, they just must have been having a bad day. Yeah, that's true. They probably were having a bad day, but that's not why you're coming to them. You want somebody to say, that sounds really hard. Or how did that make you feel? Or tell me more. So being curious and open is more helpful than just slapping on a solution or telling somebody not to feel a certain way. Once again, when we tell people not to feel a certain way, it's often that we want to handle our discomfort. Oh, it's not that bad, because we want to believe it's not that bad. But if you really truly want to be there for someone you love, whether it's a parent, a child, a sibling, a friend, a partner, just let them have their feelings. Feelings will make things come true. So I'm afraid of dying of breast cancer. If they talk about that, their fears, it won't make them die of breast cancer, but it's pretty uncommon for not people not to be afraid that a breast cancer diagnosis means that they might die of breast cancer. That's, that's just sort of part of the cancer story is fears of death. So that's emotional support. We're talking about listening and validating. The next thing I'd like to talk about is practical support. 
One of the things people tell me when they've had cancer and they want to talk about the kind of support they need, one thing that's really hard for them is this open-ended question of, what can I do for you? Or let me know how I can help. And the thing that's difficult is you haven't set aside the scope of what you're able to do. So what I mean by that is you might be willing to pump somebody's gas for them. And that's it. That's what you're capable of doing. Or you might be able to take them to every single appointment. You might be able to babysit for them. You might be able to set up a meal train. I don't know if you know what that is, but that's when a group of friends sign up to bring meals to people whose family or somebody in the family is going through a hard time. So kind of let them know the scope. If you're very close and you're willing to do things like laundry, I have to tell you that is one of the biggest things that you can do for somebody because it needs to be done. It needs to be done often. Nobody really enjoys doing it. It requires a lot of movement of the hands and arms. And if somebody said surgery, their limited range of motion can be difficult. And it's something really hard to ask your partner to do. I just know in most partnerships, that is one of the top complaints is I do all the laundry. There are other things you can help with. Unloading the dishwasher. Why am I bringing that up? Because I hate unloading the dishwasher. When my kids come over, that's one of the things they know will be nice for me. But if you don't know what that person needs help with, you can make some suggestions. The key part is to tell them the scope. Like, is it little things that you're willing to do? Let me know if I can get groceries for you when I'm doing my own grocery shopping. Or let me know if I can take the kids to school in the morning if you have a doctor's appointment. Let me know if you want me to come and be with you while you get chemotherapy. I'm hoping this is helpful in terms of practical support rather than the vague, let me know what I can do to help or what do you need? Everybody's different. Some people are very private. It would never in a million years let you do their laundry. And other people, that would be a huge thing. So everybody's different. Finally, I'd like to end with things not to do. I already mentioned a few of those in the emotional support and even in the practical support, but there are some things that are really hard for people going through breast cancer and its treatment. One is sharing stories you've heard of people who have had a difficult time with treatment. I'll be honest with you, the first thing that will pop into your head when your friend tells you that they have cancer is that you know somebody else who had cancer who recently died. That is not helpful. It's understandable. You know, you see somebody, they tell you they have cancer. The last person you know who had cancer pops into your head. You're so anxious about saying the right thing that the worst thing pops out. Try not to share nightmare stories. Try not to talk about somebody who had chemotherapy and ended up with terrible side effects because those really severe side effects happen quite rarely, to be honest. And here's a person trying to make a decision about what is best for them. So keep a lid on it. You can journal about that yourself. You can talk about that with somebody else. Try also not to talk about your own fears and needs, at least in not the beginning. At some point, talking about your feelings and needs will keep the lines of communication open. But when somebody's going through the crisis of an early diagnosis and that really complicated part at the beginning of treatment, when they're going from doctor to doctor to doctor and they don't know what's coming, try to find friends or family you can talk to or a support group that you can talk to about your fears. The other thing I would recommend avoiding doing is withdrawing. So if you know somebody who's been diagnosed with breast cancer and you don't know what to say, one of the worst things you can do is to ghost your friend. And I know from comments on other videos we've done that ghosting is pretty common. It's understandable. You're scared of saying the wrong thing. You're scared of losing your friend or your loved one, but ghosting them adds injury to insult or insult to injury. So they're already going through the injury of all the physical changes and now they've been abandoned. And being abandoned is one of the hardest things to go through. Even if you don't know what to say, you can say, I don't know what to say, but I am here for you. I'm hoping that's helpful. The other thing not to do 
is to bombard them with other treatment options. They are already getting information overload. So printing a bunch of stuff off the internet about a cancer people don't even have is really not helpful. Printing out a bunch of things that are in opposition to their treatment plan is incredibly confusing to people. You can ask questions. Have you thought about such and such? Or where do you stand regarding such and such a treatment? But if you print out a bunch of things, they feel like you're judging them. They feel as if you're saying what they are doing is not the right thing. Even if you feel that way, try to find somebody else to chat that over with. Or you could even bring that up if you go to a doctor visit, or you can drop a comment or question below in this video. I've covered a lot. Don't forget to subscribe. We put out three videos a week with lots of things about helping people who have breast cancer, emotional support, and other issues. You can go to yerba.com to learn more about your treatment options if you're going through breast cancer and its treatment. Follow us on Instagram and drop a comment or question below. Thanks for watching.